Hello there, welcome back. In this video we're going to be taking a quick look at this fella. This is a Power Extra 12 megapixel HD game cam. This is an all-weather camera that would normally just be strapped to a tree, or in this case, strapped to an old chimney pot. Trying to get a picture of the kingfisher on my pond. And you would basically set these up and leave them overnight for a week or until the batteries ran out trying to capture wildlife in pictures and also in videos. i to switch this one off because I've actually had this one running for the last ooh, three, four weeks using cheap batteries and I basically have run it until the batteries are almost dead to see how many pictures and videos I can get. It took well over a thousand videos and photos and I had it set to take two photos and then a 20 second video. So that's a hell of a lot of footage. I've used the 32 gig memory card in here and it's filled it up quite nicely. Obviously with better quality batteries, you're gonna get a lot more life out of that. But even with these cheap ones, to get over a thousand pieces of footage is impressive. Now I'm not gonna insult your intelligence by doing an unboxing video. If you want to see what comes with this in the box, simply look at the Amazon listing click on the pictures. What I am going to do is quickly run through the various features and also how to set it. Then I think we'll take a look at the footage that this one's managed to capture and then I'll actually give my thoughts on the picture quality, the video quality, trigger speed, etc, etc at the end of the video. Okay, the first thing you've got to do really in order to be successful with a game cam is to understand the creature that you're trying to capture on the game cam. And that requires a little bit of knowledge of wildlife. Not huge amounts, but the basics. You've got to be able to recognise where animals are travelling, i.e. the tracks, the signs, sometimes the smells, what they leave behind, like the badger toilet that's up here. And you can increase your chances by putting a little bit of bait down. I tend to scatter a few fish pellets around the place. Even just half a dozen scattered around in front of the camera about 10 to 15 feet away will give you good results because animals can sniff them out. Just behind me here we've got a place where badgers certainly come through because there's a, a well-worn track up there to the place that they use as their toilet. So by setting a camera on here looking towards there, chances are we're going to get a badger. So we'll strap that on there. If it isn't quite straight, just stick something down behind it, get it more or less leveled up. Wrap this around the tree to tidy it up, and you're good to go. Make sure the strap's tucked nicely in, because if that starts flapping around in front of the sensor, you'll have thousands of pictures of a flappy strap. Now here we've got off, set up, and on. So we go to set up. Comes on, press menu, and this is really, really easy to navigate with the arrow keys. You can set the mode, which is either only photos or photos and videos or only videos. You can set the photo size. I've got it set on the full 12 megapixel video size as well. That's basically the video quality, uh, amount of pictures, video length. Uh, this one's actually set at 30 seconds. On the next page, we've got interval periodic shot, which is basically a field scan function. You can set that to fire off every minute or every two minutes or every five minutes in case there's something out of detection range that you still want to get a picture of. Side PIR, which are basically these sensors, always have those on. Volume record on as well, just in case there's anything calling just out of range. Uh, auto power off five minutes, that just saves the battery a bit. Next page is just kind of basic options, backlight timer, flashlight timer, date and time. I normally have that switched off, but you will see that from some of the photos that I've got on later in the video, I actually left that on. I forgot to knock that off. And time format, you can have a 12 or 24 hours. Timestamp on or off, I like that off. You can name your camera if you want. You can have it password protected, change the language. And you can also change the settings if you want to link it straight up to your TV or a laptop. It's got PAL or NTSC. Format is to format the memory card. Very important you do that just to wipe off any old data and to ensure that it works properly. Reset to factory. That will basically reset all of your personal settings. 
and system. I don't actually know what that is. I've never looked at that. And I don't regard it as important because it doesn't seem to affect anything I do. <laughs> I'll have to look that up. I don't know what that is. Have a look in the instructions yourself. So basically, you set it to what you want. Press the menu to get it off. Knock it from setup to on. Clip it back up. If you want to take pictures of birds on perches, I would advise roughly two foot six away from the camera. That is a good distance to get nice clear pictures. Anything closer than two feet and it could possibly be blurry. Okay, this has got 42 black LEDs, which basically gives it a no glow feature. That means that when you walk past it, you shouldn't be able to see any glow coming off here whatsoever. And I can confirm that when I've been walking around on a night and it's been taking pictures of me, I haven't been able to see any glow from this at all. The batteries last a hell of a long time. They're well retained in here. They're not going to fall out. And the control interface, i.e. how you set the thing and how you check to see if it's taking any pictures, is a hell of a lot more intuitive than it is on the Bushnell cameras. I much prefer the interface on this one. Quality of construction also is very, very good. The trigger time is very, very good as well. I think it's 0.2 seconds. It'll certainly get birds coming in to land on a perch. Price, five out of five. Quality of construction, five out of five. Picture quality, five out of five. Features, five out of five. Interface, five out of five. Video quality, three out of five. That's the one area where this is let down. But on the plus side, that allows you to really fill up your memory cards with hundreds and hundreds of videos. If it was the full 1080 HD, you'd very quickly fill up your memory card. So there is a trade-off there. Overall, definitely five out of five. Now I would definitely recommend this to beginners and also seasoned game cam users as well. As I say, I've got Bushnell cameras, I've got other budget cameras. And I am impressed with this, genuinely. It is good. Even if you've only got basic knowledge of wildlife, as long as you've got plenty of different species in your area, this will deliver good pictures and decent videos of it. Check out my YouTube channel and my playlist. It's called Pond Guru vs Nature. That's all game cam stuff. Thanks very much for watching. See you next time.